Have you ever tried to do something really, really simple in Logic Pro, but kind of come unstuck and thought there must be just some simpler way to do this, right? Or maybe you just wish that Logic Pro handled something a little bit differently or did something automatically for you. Well, some good news for you. You can actually change some of these features in Logic Pro to work for you and unlock some pretty powerful features along the way. So let's just check out 10 of these features today that I reckon should have been on by default in Logic Pro. Hey, my name is Steve and welcome back to Command Shift New. Let's dive in straight away and check out some of these features in Logic Pro. Some of them are actually really, really cool and Logic Pro has some powerful features, some hidden gems tucked away in there. We're gonna check out 10 of them today with a little bonus tip at the end. And if you need to come back to any of them, there will be some time codes below. Let's check it out. Okay, the first feature here is the Fade Tool. You've probably seen the Fade Tool before. If you open up your menu options, you can jump down to Fade Tool and that allows you to bring a fade onto the track. But I have an even faster and easier way to set it up for you. Let me get rid of that for a moment and return my tool back to the pointer. I'm gonna come up to Logic Pro, I'm gonna select the settings and I'm gonna go into General. Over here, if we come across to Editing, there's an option to turn on Fade Tool Click Zones. When I turn this one on, what happens is you get a fade option at the top right and top left of each of these zones. If I just drag this in, I'm getting a fade straight away. And I can even adjust the fades curve so easily, so much better. This is something that I love inside of Ableton. Like every region has these handles that you can grab and they're just fade ready. Like why wasn't this one on by default? And before you tell me that it's not on by default because there's a loop tool at the top right that it replaces, it doesn't actually replace it. Check this out. Each corner of the region does something a little bit different. So at the bottom right, you can grab the handles and you can reduce or stretch out a region. And normally at the top right, you would get a loop tool. However, in the middle, you still have that loop tool available. So you can still loop regions really easily with this fade tool. So do yourself a favor and turn that one on because fading in and out of regions is actually quite common. Speaking of tools, that takes me to my second one, which is to add a little bit more functionality to the right click. At the moment, if you right click, you get a contextual menu, as in you get a menu of options that might be applied to this particular thing that you've right click, in this case, the region. So I've got things like I can edit it, I can name and color it and so on, whatever. However, again, if I come up to my Logic Pro settings and into general, I can decide what the right mouse button actually does. If I want to, I can assign it to a particular tool or I can assign it to open the tools menu. My favorite is actually to open the tool and the shortcut menu together. So if I click on this option and then right click, I can change the tool really quickly and really easily just by right clicking and selecting a tool. It also still has all of the usual right-click menu options that I like, so I find this really, really simple and much easier to use. If, however, you turn on the tool option, let's take a look at that one. So again, I'll go into my Logic Pro, my settings, my general, and I'll make sure I'm on the editing tab, and I'm gonna change this to is assignable to a tool. Now we've got three options coming up here. This end one here becomes my right-click tool. So if I right-click somewhere on a region, I can chop it in half. I can change that tool to whatever I like. So if I wanna use the eraser tool, right click and the region is gone. A really powerful option and you can still get to the right click menu. If you hold down the control key and just click left on the region, you can still get to your right click menu. So if you really find yourself switching between tools, this is a great option for you. You can change the right click to what you want. Now, another great thing to customize is the display menu at the top. You can notice already that I'm in the custom display option. So out of all the options to choose, you can choose custom and it gives you some of the most information. However, if you want to, you can customize the control bar and the display further. What you're customizing here is not just the display part, but also the buttons that you can see on this window. So if you want to be able to show software monitoring, for example, you can turn that one on and a new icon appears, or you can remove it and get rid of useless ones that you don't really need. Over on the custom display, I love, for example, the fact that I can show the sample rate. That is something that is really important to me when I'm working between, you know, normal music production that's in 44.1 and film score, which is in 48. I really want to be able to see quickly if this project is set up correctly. The great thing is here that once you've got it set up the way that you like it, you can make sure it always opens in that way. Just simply come down here and just save as default. And if at any time you think, oh, this is not so good, you can just revert to the original and start again. Now, speaking of additional buttons on that toolbar, here's one that I use so much. Again, if I come up and do my customized control bar and display, there is an option that I've turned on here called capture recording. What that does is turn on this button here. So for example, if I'm on this software instrument and I'm hitting play and I play a few notes on my keyboard like I'm doing now, and I go, oh, I wish I had recorded that. Just simply stop, use the capture record button, 
and my MIDI region is there. I can't tell you how many times that saved the inspiration, the idea that I thought was completely lost, but even if you use the keyboard shortcut Shift R, then you can just capture it straight away. It's best to do that as soon as you think about it because if you go back, play again, you'll override the captured temporary recording. But it's a little bit of a lifesaver and I wish that that button was there and prominent all the time because again, I just don't understand why that isn't something that's promoted. Now I've started to add some tracks to my workspace and most of the time they just appear in the default colors and that's okay, but you can, if you like, customize the color scape of all of your tracks and automatically make them different colors. If we jump up again to our Logic Pro settings, and this time we're gonna come down to the view option. Inside the view option, we could come across to tracks and inside tracks, you can change track color from static to assigning to 24 or 96 different colors. Let's say 24, for example, and I'm also gonna change this region color to match the track color. So it's gonna auto assign a color to the track and then create the regions to that track color as well. So if I come up here and I create five tracks under audio, for example, we get a whole bunch of different colors being assigned to each of these tracks. Now it really depends on your workflow. Maybe you have particular instruments that are particular colors, so you would prefer more control over it. But if you're someone that just likes to write ideas and at least quickly see the difference between different regions and different tracks, this is a great option for you. Personally though, for me, I like to have my certain instruments under certain colors, so I leave that one switched off. Now, while we're in this little view menu here, I thought it might be worth mentioning one particular gripe that you might have with Logic. If you've done any kind of music theory before, you may have been taught that C4 is middle C. And that basically comes from the fact that on the piano, there are eight Cs and you'll have C1 is the very first lowest C that you'll hear. And as you work your way up C4, the fourth C that you hear is middle C. However, you might've noticed that Logic Pro treats middle C as C3. And this is because it's counting like a computer. So it treats the first C as C0 because zero based counting with computers. You can change that function though. In the same view menu, you can come across to general and then under here, you can change it from C3 Yamaha to C4 Roland. Basically Yamaha uses the uh, C0 to C7 mentality, whereas Roland sticks to the kind of classic music theory idea of C1 to C8. It's entirely up to your preference. I've got used to the C3 and I kind of, because I work in a lot of like development stuff for software instruments and libraries, I'm used to C3 being the middle C. But if this is something that's been bothering you, then a really quick fix for you. Hopefully that helps. Now let's talk about how files are saved and also how the program opens. So first of all, if you wanna save a file, I definitely recommend storing everything in the file package. So of course we come up to file, we hit save as, and when you come to this screen, these are the important things that you need to remember. First of all, I always recommend storing as a package. It's a great way to kind of keep everything together and you can easily drag it between different Macs that you're working on or with different people that you're working on. But the main thing I wanna show you are all of these options. And I would just simply recommend to tick on every single one. What this will mean is that anytime your logic session relies on a file that might be locally stored on your computer, it will copy it into the package and save it along with your session. This is really important if you're planning on sharing your session with someone or moving your session to another computer to work on it. Other doors have features like this, like Ableton's collect all and save, for example, but you can actually have this on by default. The first time you save a package with all of those options ticked on, it'll just remember that that's your sort of default setting. So it will save every package like that. The reason by default it might leave some files behind is because it doesn't want to overinflate your session file because you've got to store that somewhere. But you know, this isn't the 90s or 2000s anymore. We don't have tiny little hard drive space. We quite often got a lot of hard drive space. And I would say it's better to store all of your files together and make sure that they're always there whenever you need to access that file, which might be, you know, a few years into the future and you've lost that original file that might've been on your computer. So it's worth doing. Now, the other thing is how does Logic actually start up? You might be used to Logic basically just opening up your last session by default, the last one that you worked on and saved. And that can be really annoying if all you wanna do is open up Logic so you can start a new session, but it's bringing up your old one and you gotta wait for that one to load and then close it and start a new session. It's just irritating. You can change that functionality. So you can jump into Logic Pro, into the settings under general, and on the first tab under project handling, you've got startup action. And I've set mine to ask. This means Logic will ask you what you actually wanna do 
before it does anything. So at that point, you could load up an old session or you could open a different session or you could start a brand new session. You could open a template. You could do a number of things, but it will ask you what you want to do, not just start with one of them. You can, of course, set a default mode in any kind of way and, you know, open most recent project is the default, or you can just choose it to do nothing. It'll open up logic and then you'll need to come up to the file edit track menu and all that sort of stuff to decide on what your next option is. So I like to leave it at ask, try it out, see how it goes. Now I have two more tips, but it is worth noting that these are both what we call project setting level. What this unfortunately means is we can't set it up by default. It's not something we can turn on and have Logic Pro always have these features on. A little bit annoying really, if you ask me, but I do have a workaround which I'll share at the end. Now the first one of these is the second ruler. In your session, you can jump up to view and you can choose second ruler. This is fantastic, when, particularly when you're doing stuff like film scoring, where you want to be able to see the time code of the film and also the bars and beats of your music. It's not just film score though, you might be doing Foley or you might be integrating stuff into a larger file and maybe timing is important. But whatever the case is, sometimes having two rulers is just really, really easy. And it's something that I've kind of got used to having. The other thing that I really think is essential and I cannot believe it is not on by default. And I can't believe that it's a project level setting and not something you can turn on globally by default. It's MIDI chase. I've shared videos of this before, but really quickly, this is what it looks like. If I just record some simple held sustained notes, Now we have two notes that are being played. If I try and play this from somewhere after the notes have started though, absolutely nothing will be heard. And this is because the event has already passed. The start of the note is the event that triggers the note and when that's already passed, it means that it's not gonna play those notes until a new note comes along. That's really frustrating when you've got long held notes, things like drones in film score, for example. So there is a feature you can turn on called MIDI chase that will play those notes for you. If you jump up to file and you go into project settings and you go into MIDI, from here you wanna come across to the chase tab and you wanna turn notes on. Now, as soon as you hit play, you'll be able to hear those notes. So again, this is really useful if you're doing long held notes or textural pads or something under a film score or something like that. And you've got to play these notes, but you don't always wanna to have to start at the beginning or start at the beginning of that section just to be able to hear them. Now, the last two features there, the rulers and the MIDI chase, they are project level, which means that you can't save those by default. But bonus tip, I have a way around that. You can save your file as a template. So I just got rid of those extra tracks. I've now just got one basic audio track and I've got my two rulers turned on and my MIDI chase settings are on as well. Now what I'm gonna do is come up to file and I'm gonna save as a template. I'm just gonna call that one my empty session, something like that. Hit save. Now when I go file new from template, I'm presented with the new project templates, the usual ones, but I can come across to my version and in there I'll have the my empty session. When I choose that one to open up, it's got those settings there ready to go. So we've got the two rulers and if I come up to file, project settings into the MIDI and jump across to chase, notes are on. So that way, instead of starting with an open session from Logic's default empty session, you can start from your own template. So there you have it, a bunch of features in Logic Pro that I reckon should have been on by default, at least been made aware of these way sooner than I have been. Hopefully that speeds up your workflow or, you know, resolves one of those like niggling little issues that you have with the program. Of course, you're welcome to subscribe for more helpful videos like this in the future, but otherwise I will catch you in the next one.